Deep in the heart of the Ruby Mountains, you climb about 2,400 feet on a winding road that is heart-stopping. Pay attention on that. And when you finally get here, you're gonna find this alpine beauty, Angel Lake. Now, let's go find Joe and fish this thing. Joe, I'm not overstating my case here. This is one of the most beautiful spots I've ever been to, especially in Nevada. You really know how to do it. <laughs> you know, look at this. It's it's the first week of June. We still got snow behind us, but we're in shirt shirt sleeves, right? Yeah. Um, this is a glacial carved cirque. It's a natural lake. It's called Angel Lake. There is a dam that was built in the 1920s to increase the capacity because they use it for irrigation down in the valley. Let's talk about the lake itself. Sure. How deep is it? How cold is it? So the lake is fairly cold. As you can see, there's snow. That's what feeds it. Um, it'll actually have probably four or five feet of ice during the winter. And this time of year, we're at, the ice came off probably about three weeks to a month ago. So the water's mid 40 degrees. During the summer, it'll get up to a balmy 53, 55 degrees. What kind of fish you got in here? So we have trout in here, and we have three types of trout. We have rainbow trout, which are stocked every year. We have brook trout, which are naturally reproducing, and so they don't need to be stocked. And then we also stock tiger trout, which is a cross between a brook and a brown. And it's sterile, grows faster, much more fun to catch. They fight, they're aggressive. So let's start with the basics. I want to go fishing at Angel Lake. I'm going to need a license, right? You need a fishing license. You can buy it at ndow.com and buy it right on your phone. It's phone friendly. And then if it asks you if you want to print it or have it mailed, say print. It loads a PDF on your phone and you don't need to have a license with you. That PDF on your phone is all you need. It's awesome. It's very convenient. And what are the limits? What can I do? So up here, the, the, the number of trout you can keep is five trout. That's your daily limit, but possession limit is the same as daily limit. So until you consume some of those fish, you can't take any more home. But if you practice catch and release, you know, you can catch and release and go all day long. I've had days up here where I've caught 30, 40 fish in a morning. It just, since I'm not keeping them, I let them go and I keep fishing. I don't think I've ever caught 30, 40 <laughs> fish in my life. <laughs> what do you use? Tell me, give me the secret. So, How are we going to do this? So you and I are going to fish a little bit different. Okay. So I like to fly fish. And it's so hard. flies, flies um, basically what they do is they will imitate aquatic insects. And trout are insectivorous. They eat aquatic insects. And people don't realize that a lot of the insects you see spend most of their life underwater. Oh, wow. So like a damselfly that you see flying around those little blue things like look like a dragonfly, two years of its life is underwater as a nymph, uh, first as a larva and then as a nymph, and then about two weeks of its life flying around, procreating, and then dying, and fish eat primarily the stuff underwater. Had no idea. Yes. Never heard that before. So, so they eat primarily what we call macroinvertebrates. And in this case, you're using a spinning rod. And one of the things I've done is I've given you a red hook, fish like red for whatever thing. It looks like blood and that kind of stuff. So I will thread the, the worm onto that red hook. We've got a bobber that we can actually fill with a little bit of water, and that will give it some weight to make it easier for casting, but it'll still be up there where you can see it on the, on the deal. And so basically, and I've got a little piece of sinker to help keep that worm down where the fish are, because the fish are not necessarily up close to the surface. And of course, you know, the good old worms, and you've got these worms, and you know how to tell if a worm is gonna catch a fish? How? Tell me. Okay, it's the easiest thing in the world. Moms, your kids are gonna love this. If it tastes good to you, it tastes good to the fish. <laughs> That's a fishtail right there. That is a fishtail and I'm not buying it. Oh my gosh, that's a new one. So, so that's the secret to catching a fish. That's the secret. I may not be catching a fish. <laughs> I'll taste them for you. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, you do that. I'll stick to the beef jerky. Can we talk a little bit about safety before we get yeah, going Yeah, please further? do that. So you're going to be in a float tube. I'm okay. going to be in a little what we call a kick boat. Um, flow tubes are inflatables, so you got to wear a PFD, a, a flotation device. So if, God forbid, something happens and you get end up in the water, you're still going to float. If you feel your, your float tube starting to get a little low, don't try to get back to where you started. Uh. Go to the nearest shore. Hey, Joe, let's go fishing. Let's go. From there, Joe got me suited up and into the water. This water is cold. Do the fish care if it's windy? Um, some of my best days have been on windy days. Okay, I like your attitude. 
Can you bring the net? I have a net. All right. You catch a fish, I'll come. We talked. We floated. We floated and talked. Joe is a great fishing buddy and a wealth of information, from the environment and wildlife to how our land can offer us all so much. Some of it, uh, a lot of the match actually comes from volunteers. Floating around this incredible lake, you can take in the sights all around you. The peaks, the waterfalls, the clouds that look close enough to touch. It's a magical and calming experience. Tell you what, Joe, I hope the fish don't bother us. I could do this forever. The fish didn't bother us, not once. Joe said it best, it's called fishing, not catching. Didn't matter to me, I had a great time. When it comes to visiting Angel Lake, the timing is very important. You definitely want to check the forecast to make sure the weather is right. Though it was a bit windy, we couldn't have asked for a better day. Feeling comfortable in that? Yeah, I am. Good. You should do this for a living. The Nevada Department of Wildlife and U.S. Forest Service have done an amazing job at keeping this area pristine. Barely a sign of trash. And that being said, when you do visit, do your part to keep it this way. Even though the fish weren't biting, I could have spent the whole day at Angel Lake, easy.